Hey, get in, we're going biking. Hey, Sun Space Sun, I'm Daisy Victoria, and today we are going biking, or at least we're making Norse Viking Age clothing. While I have interest in the Viking Age, I typically tend to do later period costuming. Whenever I do medieval and renaissance, I tend like more toward the renaissance or like the late medieval, but this time we're gonna explore the Viking Age. I've briefly dabbled in this era before, a long time ago, and now it is time to get back into it. Now in the Viking Age, Vikings are the ones who go on the sea raiding voyages, but we tend to kind of hear the word Viking to describe sort of the Viking Age, which is when the Vikings were raiding. Now there is so little information about the clothing from this time and like most of what survived has become fragments and disintegrated. I am so, so amazed at how we can take those fragments and put together what we think the clothes really looked like. And today I'm going to be working on a very simple dress. It's one of the things that people kind of think of with the Viking Age clothing because this dress find is very specific to that time and region. Today I'm going to make the famed Viking apron dress. There are a few patterns out there, a few ideas on how to make this dress, and I really think that they weren't all made the exact same way. There were so many people that could have worn similar types of dresses. I'm using a layout that I think is fairly simple and I would like to share that with you guys. And not only is this a cool dip for me into the Viking era, but I think this is something that a lot of people can make fairly easily without like tons of sewing skill. So I think this is a really accessible project. And I like that because I want everyone to know that it doesn't have to be difficult to get into costuming or making your own clothing or historic garb. By the way, do you guys wanna know the dates and locations for the Viking world tour? I'm definitely not sponsored by Grimfrost. I'm just absolutely in love with this shirt. It's exactly my type of humor, and I'm also a metalhead, so. For my apron dress, I'm using this blue fabric I found, which has a weave that mimics some of those wool weaves that we see in period. This fabric is made of cotton, and I'm hoping that it will be really nice for that Texas weather that I plan to wear it in. In order to cut out this dress, I am folding the fabric over so I get equal, like, symmetrical pieces. And you'll see as we go along kind of what the shapes of those pieces are. The construction is pretty simple, and it's basically rectangular, though I am flaring out the bottom pieces of my main body pieces, so it's kind of like rectangular, trapezoidal, triangular. You'll see in a moment. This type of dress is commonly referred to as an apron dress in English. Sometimes you will see it written as Hongarak el smoker. That comes from the Old Norse word for this type of dress. We do have some reference to Viking Age clothing from the sagas that were written after the Viking period. And that helps us along with the archeological evidence we do have to kind of piece together what people might've worn back then. In order to get the sizing for this apron dress, I basically measured around my bust. I gave it a little bit of extra room because I knew I wasn't making it perfectly fitted and I wanted to kind of try it out because I knew I could take it in a little if I wanted to. For the length, I simply measured how long I want it to be. And other than that, this is a pretty simple design, which is great because that makes it accessible, which I love. I started by sewing some of the triangular pieces onto the body pieces, which are generally rectangular, but they flare out below the body portion. This is very similar to how I made my tea tunic underdress in a prior video. And in fact, I will be wearing that underdress underneath this new apron dress or smoked. Though we have limited archeological evidence of clothing from this era, we primarily see a range of sort of rectangular based construction with either rectangles, triangles, trapezoids, some sort of shape that's cut from a basic rectangle.
because of the way I cut this out on the fold of my fabric, which I thought would be the most efficient. I ended up with a seam in one of my triangles and also one of my body pieces, so I put those seams in the back of the dress. By the way, I will also note here that the term you sometimes see for the underdress is serk, which again comes from an Old Norse word. You can also just call it a tunic or an underdress in English. Typically on this type of dress, we see straps that run from the back to the front, and that is where they will be attached with brooches. There are a number of ways to make straps for a Viking apron dress. You can even use some sort of a cord or handwoven trim to make things very simple for this little experiment here and also for anyone trying this out at home on your own, I'm simply using some of the same fabric as the body of the dress. In order to make that into straps, I'm basically just making tubes and turning them right side out. That way I'll be able to attach the two long straps to the back of the dress and two short little straps to the front of the dress. And that will allow me to hook on the brooches so that way I can hook them through the front little straps and onto the back straps. The straps are sewn on after I constructed the dress, so that way I could test where I wanted to put them. We have a lot more archaeological evidence of things like brooches than we do of the actual garments. In fact, I've very much enjoyed myself looking at brooches and beads and arm rings and other various Viking Age artifacts in museums in Scandinavia. In particular, I really enjoyed some of the brooches I saw in Historiska in Stockholm. Going through the photos I took at Historiska several years ago, I realized that I have tons and tons of photos, so I am happy to share a lot more than these. I will put those up over on Patreon, so if you are a patron there, you can go ahead and look at all the photos I took last time I was there. For my brooches, I'm going with a mass-produced alternative to artisan pieces for this experiment and to show you guys that you don't have to have the most expensive or most crazy high-end thing to sort of put together an outfit. And in fact, I have been buying some of my mass produced pieces for this type of clothing in bulk, so that way I can offer some of them to you. I'm being a little picky about the quality and the look of pieces because I want it to look like it's a really good, a really nice piece, even if maybe it's not the level of artisan quality as like an artist made piece. So I'll put what I have in my shop and we'll see how that goes. I may rotate stock or just put in whatever I have whenever I get it. I'm also going to be using some tablet woven trim. I made this a while ago. One of my many, many hobbies is tablet weaving. And though it's been a little while since I've done it, I might need to do some again. This is one of the pieces that I created and we're just gonna go ahead and use it cause it's already made. I'm also going to be wearing this beautiful necklace that a very dear friend of mine, Barbara gifted to me. I don't have the perfect Viking shoes based on like a Viking grave find or anything, but I do have my medieval shoes and I think they get the job done. I first wore this dress to Gulf Wars in Mississippi where it was very warm and I was able to actually fold up the sleeves of my underdress. For my head covering, I'm using a white linen veil which I've sort of tied in a knot in the back. 
and you might notice I'm missing a strand of beads here. That's because it fell off <laughs> because I thought I used really strong string, which I happen to have on hand, but I really suggest that you use beading wire and we're gonna see how I fix that. Here is the beading wire. So basically I rescued my bead strands and put them on beading wire. You need a little crimp bead and you're gonna use that. Basically you're gonna put it onto your beading wire and then thread the wire through whatever is your end piece and then back through the crimp bead and then just tighten that with a pair of pliers. And then you can feed the end of that beading wire back through a few of your beads. And then that should be much more secure than even what I like to think is a sturdy thread. So what do I think of this dress? Though it's not as fitted as the clothing I usually wear, it's so nice and comfy and I feel like I could just run around and play in it like all day. I had so much fun doing the hairstyle. I was a little bit nervous because we don't know exactly what Vikings looked like and I know there's so many out there that want to argue that they know exactly. but. In reality, we're all just interpreting stuff. And I was inspired by the Vikings TV show that I've finally been watching, but also I looked at all the Valkyrie figures and I saw how they have their hair kind of like knotted, usually in the back, sometimes on the sides. And I just went for something that was fun and I played with my hair and had fun doing it. I think the apron dress is a really simple project. I feel like it's accessible to a lot of people, which is really, really awesome. And sometimes, even for those of us who like to take on big projects, it's really nice to just do something simple and have something fun to wear. It's that instant gratification, right? If you take some inspiration from this project and you make your own Viking clothes, or maybe you're just inspired for something else, feel free to tag me because I would love to see what you make. Find me on all the social medias as Daisy Victoria. My website is daisyvictoria.com. And a special thank you to my patrons over on Patreon who help me so much to continue creating amazing content such as this. I hope you all have an absolutely magical day, and I will see you again real soon. Bye-bye!